Ghost here tonight. I'm so thankful. So thankful for what I feel, His presence here today. Praise God. I was here working today and walking through some of the areas. And I don't know, I just felt the sweet presence of the Lord come over me. Walking through the halls and I could tell, you know, that God loves this place. He loves the house of worship. He loves His people that gives Him praise. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And I just want you to know, I, I appreciate this church, what you stand for, your worship, your love, your kindness towards people. Because I'm going to tell you, that's the only way we're going to win them. Because this world will try and trap them and hold them. It's the smile on your face. It's the pat on the back. It's the kind words that you say to them. That's how you win, folks, and get their immediate attention. And I'm so thankful for that. It's good to see each and every one of you. If you're a visitor here tonight, we're thankful that you're in the house of the Lord with us. We're going to worship God. We're going to let him have praise tonight. Amen. We're going to see what God has for us. Let's worship the Lord together.
few saints tonight that have a little praise in their heart for our Lord. It might be a Wednesday night, but thank y'all. That, that lifts my spirits. It lifts my spirits. Have a little rain trying to stir up outside, and the Lord wants to rain down on his blessings on us tonight. Praise the Lord. Have a few to be prayed for today. Continue prayer for Caffrey Whitehead, for Brother Bobby Boycher, Brother Teasley, Brother Mark Green, Brother and Sister Whitehurst. Continue prayer for. Love y'all. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Brother Roger Midkiff, Sister Verna Ford, Robert Jarrell, Brother Wistein, Gayla Gooden, John Horton, CJ Welch, Sister Horton, Brother Irwin. Brother Boswell, Nolan Perkins, Alan Addison, Eric Hansen, Barbara Sharp, Doug Moore, Kathy Muse, Brother Joey Roberts, prayer for Tanner Ham, Brother Powell, our good brother needs a touch from the Lord, and prayer for Sister Christian. May the Lord strengthen her and bless her. So if anyone needs a touch from the Lord, the altars are open tonight. So let's take these needs and all the needs to the Lord Jesus. We ask for your hand to be upon us. My God, you are our God, and you are so good to your children, my God. Lord, we ask that you would just put your hands on us, touch us, anoint us. Lord God, have your way tonight in this sanctuary. My God, you see every need, and you have an answer for it, my Lord. Lord, give us boldness in worship tonight. Lord God, that we give you all the honor and all the glory, and every victory is yours. And in Jesus' name, we pray. What a God we serve. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Good to see you in the house of the Lord. Glad to see Brother Todd Hillman home from the high country. Come down here to get a little of this hot heat and humidity. Praise the Lord. I hope he drug some rain with him when he, when he come. Praise the Lord. You know, such a lot of negative stuff going on in the world, United States. All the news you hear wants to be bad news. But the Bible tells me that righteousness exalteth a nation. Right. Now, I know we're doing a lot of things wrong, but we, the Supreme Court did some righteousness here recently. Yeah. And I believe God's going to honor that, and I believe God's going to exalt the United States because we're turning around. We're in a turning around situation. Praise the Lord. God's good. What a great service we had this weekend. Brother Parker ministered to us. Sunday morning and Sunday night, what a great time that was. Uh, thank you, praise team, for always, always entering us into the presence of the Lord. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Uh, what a great uh, fellowship we had, or they had Saturday night with a Spanish group, four or five, 50 people. We still want to keep giving God the glory for that. Brother and Sister Alvarez, Brother uh, Midkiff, assisting them in that. What a great great thing that is and we give God praise we give God glory we're just especially in a great breakthrough in our Spanish work uh, Brother Wood did a tremendous job in partners in evangelism session Sunday uh, we appreciate that so very much uh, what great lessons they are as we keep going along on every Sunday afternoon prior to service uh, this coming Sunday July the 3rd the day before the 4th, Freedom Sunday. We're going to have a time around here. Brother Jason Alvarez is going to be preaching Sunday morning. And Sunday night, we're not going to have service here, but we're going to meet across the, high, across the highway in our Family Life Center. And uh, we're going to have a great church fellowship, a little uh, bring your own covered dish and food, fun, fellowship. Some of them is going to be playing volleyball. Uh, some of us will be sitting around watching them playing volleyball. Uh, we'll be having a great time, a great time of fellowship. It's always good to get together with God's wonderful people. And thank God for the fellowship we have in our church here. Uh, we're just uh, thankful for that. Uh, if you want to, if any of you elders want to get you a team together, you can see Katie, Sister Katie. Well, it's not Mitchell anymore. It's Katie McCullough. And uh, get you a team entered. Uh, and of join in the fun with those youngsters. Uh, 
July the 10th. Uh, we'll be having, that's the week after camp meeting. Uh, we'll be having a great celebration here and we'll be talking about and commemorating what all good went on that week. We have some, they have some great, great ministers lined up. I hope some of you, uh, many of you can get to go to camp meeting, get to, to Tioga to, and hear some of those great uh, men of God as they bring the word to us. We're looking forward to that. Brother Victor Dowd will kind of be heading up the, the testimonies about, about camp meeting. And then Sunday night, Brother Ethan Logston will be ministering to us in the evening service at 6 o'clock. July the 17th, Brother Tim Mahoney will be ministering to us. July the 18th through the 22nd, Vacation Bible School. Dr. Johnson, come tell us about that. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yes, we're about three and a half weeks away from Vacation Bible School, and we're looking forward. It's going to be a great time. We have some postcards out there that you can pass out to people in the public and invite them, make sure they get their kids here to Vacation Bible School. Also, I wanted to mention that normally our Vacation Bible School will have somewhere around 60, probably 50, 60 adults that help out with that effort. It's a big effort. It's a great effort. So I have uh, some sheets out there in the hallway on those tables, and I need about 50 people to sign up for that and help in some capacity or some way with the Vacation Bible School. It's going to be great. So if you will, on your way out tonight, go sign up. Or if you know someone that you need to draft them, you draft them, okay? It's going to be great. It's going to be a fun time. You know, I, I just saw a recent story and it's kind of a sad story, but uh, I saw recently where two churches closed. One of them was over 200 years old, and the other one was a little over 100 years old. And just thinking about that story that I saw, I thought, you know, just imagine, I couldn't help but imagine, think about the weddings that took place in those churches. Now, they weren't Pentecostal churches, but still, the weddings, the children that were affected in those churches, the people that were baptized, the people that passed away and had their funeral there, the soldiers that maybe World War II or something, they might have went through there with a loss and had a funeral for no telling how many. But today they're closing the doors because they only have a handful of members. You know, one of them said that at one time, they ran about 200 people in their church. Now they're down to about 25. And, and only about three of those come to church. So we got to think about in our future. Our kids are our future. We've got to make sure we are instilling the Word of God in their hearts so that when they get to be our age, they're in this church winning souls as well, right? I appreciate all that you do, all that you help us with. We are always come to you and are always asking you for your help. We appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. We have some of the greatest kids in the world right here in our first Pentecostal church, and they got friends, and we want to do nothing less and do the best we can for them at Vacation Bible School, and we trust that the Lord will smote your heart, if it hadn't already, to come join in and help uh, in that effort, we want to have a great vacation Bible school on July the 18th through the 22nd. So we hope you can join in that effort and help us in that. Uh, we continue to celebrate uh, Katie and Dalton's wedding last uh, Friday night. And this coming Sunday night, uh, we'll be having a wedding shower along with our uh, fellowship across the, across the way. They'll, we're going to kind of double up and do a wedding shower for them also. So... Uh, Come join in that effort also. Uh, next Sunday morning, we'll be dedicating Brother and Sister uh, Sawyer Carroll's little new arrival, new baby. Uh, then July the 9th uh, at 2 p.m., we'll be having a baby shower for Nathan and Montana Summers. And then July the 15th, Jackson and Ethan will be getting married here in the sanctuary. So got lots planned, lots of things going on. Aren't you glad to be a part of the kingdom of God? Aren't you glad to be a part of the family of God? I'm, I, they used to sing that song, I'm a part of the family of God. I sure wasted my youth years because I can't sing a lick. 
but I wish I could. Y'all would hear me singing all the time. But I used to love that song when they used to sing it, where we went to church, grew up in church. Ben, I'm a part of the family of God. And when I first started hearing that, I wasn't a part of the family of God. I was a, a rank sinner, but I, it has smoked my heart. One of these days, I wanted to be a part of it. And I can rejoice now and say, thank God I'm a part of the family of God. Aren't you glad for that? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise as Brother Pennington comes to receive our evening offer. Thank you, Brother McGee. I, I am also thankful to be a part of this great church and the kingdom of God. If our ushers would come at this time, we'll take our evening offering up. I'd like to say it's good to see you, Sister Brittany. I'm glad you're home. <laughs> say that by faith. Did you bring John Hudson's cousin with you? You did? Well, good. I'm glad. I know he's happy. He's kind of reaching out for him right now. So, amen. I, I can see a future of playing and having a great time right there. It's good to see you and the baby here tonight. And I'm also thankful for God and what he does in all of our situations here. He keeps his hand on us. And to you, church, thank you for your tithes. Thank you for your offering. Thank you for your support. I can't say it enough. It's, it's what you do here that makes it all possible. Just to let you know, we're fixing to change out two more air conditioners, okay? So, amen. Yeah, somebody said amen. So we're in the process. We got them in, and uh, that'll make a total of three this year so far, so I'm thankful for that. If you would stand with me, and we're going to pray over this offering tonight. Praise God. Dear righteous God, we come to you, Lord. We're so thankful, so thankful, God. Lord, for your presence here tonight, to God to bless the giver tonight. Lord, let this offering be for your glory, and God, for your work, and we'll praise you and give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And everybody say in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Page 331.
awesome thanks. Thank you for doing that. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for the goodness of the Lord? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We are going to read just a moment or two in just a moment or two, but I want to say from our heart, we thank God for keeping his hand on our dear Caffrey, and he made it through the surgery. I felt so bad not being able to be there with the whiteheads, but we all prayed for them that morning, and the Lord watched over this wonderful little fella, and he's home, and I think it would be good to give God thanks for taking care, great care of our dear Caffrey. In Jesus' name, amen. And to the Townsley family, Daxton, I believe, if I've got it right, is maybe up there somewhere. And we rejoice in this wonderful new little addition. And I know the Woods feel so very, very happy about that. And <clears throat> now they have, um, they have got John and they've got Daxton. And it's a great thing. And I'm very, very thankful. We do ask God's continued strength of Brother Borcher. And he's out of the hospital, and there's many things we could give the Lord thanks for. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, to read a statement of Scripture, please continue to pray for Brother Mark Green in Jesus' name. And um, Colossians chapter 3 and verse 2, this Sunday morning is going to be an outstanding time. Man, what a weekend. Such a powerful move of God Sunday morning and Sunday night. Sunday night was electric, praise God. I don't know about you felt, but I felt so good in the Holy Ghost about what was happening. It was just a tremendous atmosphere. And uh, let's pray. We ought to pray right now. Lord, keep your hand on every one of these Spanish families, God. Let them be strengthened. Let them be encouraged. Let their hearts be blessed even tonight. Hallelujah. Bless Brother Alvarez right now. Brother Midkiff right now. Give strength, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. Please continue to pray for Brother Teasley. He really needs strength from the Lord. Colossians 3 and 2 is a setting of Scripture that you're well familiar with, and I know you would know without me saying, but set, set your affection on things above. Set your affection. I don't want to stretch the word too far but when you when you set something you, you 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 put it there and you intend for it to stay you've made it that's the place and uh, set something down uh, uh, it's it's important the idea as you may be seen it is that when we give God the opportunity and and I want to say again that was a beautiful wedding for our dear Katie and Dalton Friday, we ought to give the penny, those of you that were there, the Mitchells, the Penningtons, and all that were involved, absolutely. Made me want to go and get married all over again to you, darling, praise God. It was an absolutely wonderful thing. That's right. What was that? Do what in the winter? Oh, yes, I do it in the winter. Okay, I'm a little slow catching up. It was just a bit, bit on the warm side. That's right, Brother McGee, it really was. Set your affection on things above. All right, All right. It, it's important that we do that because we understand that in the Scripture, the admonition of the Lord is clear that... Um, we not allow the enemy to overwhelm us or to push us into another uh, arena of, of, of living that uh, represents loss. Uh, most of the time, we understand uh, Zechariah chapter 4, verses 6 through 10, quickly to read Zechariah 4, 6 through 10, I want to speak tonight about the man who could not let go and uh, says this, Then he answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power. And I don't know 
thank you for getting that. If you can, Zechariah 4, 6 through 10. But by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And then comes this verse. Who art thou, O great mountain? We sing a little song around here of something about that talking to that mountain and asking that mountain just exactly who are you and uh, who art thou O great mountain before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings crying grace grace unto it moreover the word of the Lord came unto me saying the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house and his hand shall also finish it. The Lord of hosts hath sent un, uh, me unto you, for who hath despised the day of small things? There's so much in this setting of Scripture that points to us about being faithful, about holding on to what is possible and not letting go. Even if it looks like it's not all you might want it to be at this moment, you hold on to that promise and you continue to keep it close to your life. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 37, a verse or two from that setting of Scripture. Ezekiel chapter 37, the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of of dry bones. How many times in the scripture has God's miraculous power showed up in a setting that appeared to be impossible on the surface? Appeared as though it could not see any evidence of the miraculous. I am convinced that's why the scripture tells us in this world you shall have tribulation, Jesus said, but be of good cheer. In fact, I told a man today, I was talking to him, and he was in the midst of some difficulty, and I quoted that little set of scripture, setting of scripture to him, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And I said, I don't know exactly what all that means, but I can tell you this, in life, you got to throw a lot of cheer on stuff. And the way to get that cheer back into the picture is to remember that our God has overcome this world. So it doesn't matter what adversary I'm facing, be of good cheer. Hallelujah. That's why I can wake up every day and say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Carried me out and set me down. Now I read, as you noted with me at the outset, set your affections on things above. Sometimes you've got to keep your affection on God when you're in the middle of the valley of dry bones. It's important that wherever the location is, and sometimes it appears that God puts something together in his own way, or at least in life, we meet circumstance that appears as though it's nothing more than a setting of complete loss. It represents every sign of chaos that you could imagine. And that valley was filled not with, with, with organized, uh, uh, an organized look of any kind, but it was a valley of dry bones, completely lost. Everything was long since past. Every hope was long since past. And he said unto me, remember, set your affection on things of God. Even in the middle of the trial, Set your affection. And when life sits you down and God sits you down, he carried me out in the spirit. And the Lord set me down in the midst of the valley of dry bones. Sometimes in life, we're just going to have to look around us and say, God, I don't see anything in what's going on here. And this world is pretty good evidence of that right now. But I thank you, Brother McGee, even in the midst of what appeared to be a valley of nothing. Somebody ought to give him praise right now. Because if we'll keep our affection on God. Oh, Lord, I want to believe that. I want to know that. And his answer was simple in verse 3. Oh, Lord God, 
thou knowest. Praise God. Somebody came up with a song years ago. Brother McGee was referring to one, and somebody else said, you know, that it is important to hold to God's unchanging hand. Build your hope on things eternal. Set your affection. Set your hope. Set your, your, your perspective on things above. Don't ever let your perspective get drugged down into this world's level. Set your affection on something higher. Set, set your treasure uh, uh, in heaven where moth doth not corrupt and thieves don't break through and steal. Make that the place of your affection. Keep your eyes on that which is higher than what this world is. I know that's simple, but folks, I'm going to tell you, if we let the enemy pull our gaze to the level of what life is around us, sometimes it can seem too much. That's exactly why one of the greatest men of faith, ultimately not perfect, had some problems, but my goodness, who among us has not had some difficulty? His great challenge came, and look, he was the guy that stepped out of the boat when nobody else did. He was the guy that was believing for a miracle when everybody else was lost in the storm. The challenge is always to continue to keep your affection out there above, somewhere above the waves, somewhere above the shadows, somewhere above what's out there. And it, it oh, oh Lord, thou knowest. <clears throat> and it was Jesus who looked at him and said, just simply come. Again, and he, sa he said unto me, prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones. We, do a, we, we just ought to constantly, and I'm thankful this church does, make a practice of just speaking and praying in faith, preaching faith, living in faith, constantly reminding ourselves that these bones can live. This circumstance is not the end, whatever. Now, I'm not here down in the mouth tonight. God's been good to every one of us in this house. If there's ever a group of people that have got something to give God thanks for, it's this great church family. We honor him. Can you give the Lord some praise? If I look back over my life and I see how good God's been, I would have to clap my hands again and say, thank you, God, for being good to me. When it looked impossible, you brought me out. Hallelujah. I just kept putting my affection. Love the Lord. Wake up every day trying to love him. Oh, say unto them, oh, you dry bones. Hear the word of the Lord. You know, you would think God in the middle of that valley would have given Ezekiel something a little more spectacular to say than that. But it was pretty straightforward. Oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Because it doesn't, it doesn't come down to our language skills and it doesn't come down to our ability. It just simply comes down so many times. If it's going to happen, it's going to be God that does it. And if it's going to happen, it's me understanding that all I've got to do is say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and him only shalt thou serve, and thou shalt love the Lord. Come on, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Somebody shout unto him in the valley that is filled with all the bones. <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah. He set me down in the middle of them. And he said, can you still put your affection on me in the middle of this valley of chaos? in the middle of this difficulty. And I will lay sinews. Behold, I will cause breath. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. You think you're talking to something that seems impossible? Here's a prophet sitting in the middle of a valley that's filled with nothing but bones. And he start talking to those bones. Somebody would have probably thought he had lost something. And he might not get it back because he was sitting out there in a pile of bones. And if you'd have walked up on him, he's talking to those bones. He's saying it's going to change around. Let me, 
Let me read it again. Not my words or what my, but this is what he told those bones. Talk about faith. Talk about being able to just set your affection and keep it somewhere. This is what he told those bones because he felt and knew that God, he had a promise. Somebody told the story about a fellow, and I can't call his name, that he was known. And the story was that he used to draw a circle in the, in the sand, and he would stand inside that circle. And part of what he became known for, he was called the circle maker. Here's the thing. You get a promise from God, draw you a circle around it, and say, I tell you how it's going to be. As for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Here it is now. You can go back to the God on the other side of the flood if you want to, or you can go and serve the gods in the land that we dwell. But I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to remember the God that got us out of Egypt, the God that got us across the Red Sea. Amen. And thus saith the Lord God, sitting in the stack of bones, and he's talking to him. Thus saith the Lord God, and you need to cool down a little bit, Elijah, uh, Ezekiel. You're getting a little too carried away. You're talking to bones now, huh? You're talking right out here in this valley. You're talking out of your head. You have lost your faculties. You must have completely slipped out sitting in that valley. And he said, behold, here's the key. He didn't want, it wasn't what he said, but he had a promise. Here's my, here's, we've got a promise, folks. This corruptible is going to put on incorruption. And this mortal is going to put on immortality. We've got a promise. Ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea. We've got a promise. We can be quiet, but I tell you what, Silas, instead of us shutting up, why don't we make some Holy Ghost noise in this prison right now? We've been beat up enough by life that can't do much else to us except just kill us. Why don't we praise him, Silas? Hallelujah, somebody said, come on, come on, Silas. Let's pick up our affection and let's put it up a little bit higher and let's look just a little bit further than where we are right now. I may be hurting, I may be in pain, I may have difficulty, but I tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna praise him anyhow. Hallelujah, I'm made up in my mind. Come on, come on, come on. And all around was folks saying, why don't you be quiet? Quit. Man, what are you? And he called, Bartimaeus called out the more. Set your affections. Because God has sent me here. Now, we are here on a mission, folks. The Lord has put us in this world to be a witness unto him. The same God that brought us out of all the chaos and all of the storm. That same God wants us to tell somebody else that he's got the power and somebody's going to look at you and say, you, are you kidding? How are they ever going to change? Well, I can't change them, but I know somebody that can. And if they'll just respond, yeah. amen. The Lord's going to cause breath to enter into you. You know, at some point you would think Ezekiel would have just kind of fell out out of the back of the wagon and said, God, wait a minute. You know, his own reasoning, his own mind. Are you glad you walk by faith and not by sight? That you just keep on trusting every day. You wake up every day and you say, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Amen. 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 I'm not... All I'm saying, folks, is we've got a reason to keep walking. We've got a reason to keep trusting him. We've got a reason to keep on praising him. We've got every reason to just be faithful.
So what glamorous thing are you going to do? I'm going to go sit in the valley of dry bones, evidently. That's what he assigned my day to. What a glorious task. Putting me out here in the middle of absolute insanity. And on top of that, he wants me to tell these crazy things. Going to get better around here. Yes, it is. You ever felt like you were preaching the sermon in the middle of or trying to live the life and everything around you? Bones. <clears throat> I've never been in a valley of bones. I can only imagine what it must have been like. I don't know whether Ezekiel got up and walked around or whether he just sat there and when he, the Lord put him there, he said just... This is your task for today is start talking to these bones. Here's what's fixing to happen. I will cause breath to enter unto you, into you, and ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you. Now, you want to talk about something to inspire your faith? You know, we thank God we have an atmosphere where people get, get, get with the program. And people are shouting hallelujah. And we're encouraging each other in the Lord. And we ought to. We should not let one message go by that somebody doesn't get involved. The, the word of God is worth responding to in this church. If there ever was a church that evidenced that, it's this church. We ought to, we ought to praise God in his sanctuary, in the firmament of his power, praise him for his mighty acts, excellent greatness, praise him with a psalter and harp, hallelujah, hallelujah, and it's a good thing to give God praise, and it's a great thing to be in an atmosphere, and great things happen when you do that. But there was no platform. There wasn't one riser. There wasn't one banjo. There wasn't one keyboard. There wasn't nobody. That works on your inspiration if you let it. You ever, you ever thought, man, it's just me. But how many places in the scripture has one person stood up? David said, there ain't nobody else out here, but I can still praise him. I'm in the middle of the sheep field. My brothers don't like me. I'm the guy that nobody wants to remember. It's all right. I'm not feeling sorry for myself. I've got something to do. So I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of these sheep, and I'm going to give God praise. And when the lion comes, I'm going to fight him. When the bear comes, I'm going to praise him. And when all I'm doing is sitting in a valley of dry bones, I'm going to tell them what the Lord told me to tell them. Don't matter what anybody else thinks. I'm going to say, here it is, guys. Y'all are part on me here. I don't know where any of you are. Y'all over the place. It's scattered. But you're fixing to get together. It's going to be a great reunion around here. And the knee bone's going to find the ankle bone. I started to say the knee bone's going to find the neck bone. But that would have been a little bit out of order. The knee bone's going to find the thigh bone, and the thigh bone's going to find the back hip bone, and the hip bone's going to, sorry, I'm not going to go through the whole song. But the bottom line is all the bones are fixing to get themselves a definition. Life is going to take, God, don't ever let me get to the place that my faith diminishes to the point that I'm willing to just let the enemy have it. Let him have the day. Let him have the situation. God puts something inside of me that says, seize, thank you, Brother Wood, the day. Get a hold of God's unchanging hand. Praise God. I got a feeling Ezekiel preached to those bones. He didn't just sit there and mutter. He told those bones like it was. Glory to God. 
I wish somebody get some faith right now and stand up in the middle of whatever that circumstance is and not by yourself and not on your power and not on your authority, but stand up in the middle of that and say something's about to happen around here. There's going to some breath on you and send you on you. Life is going to come to you. Somebody ought to give the Lord some praise with me right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. (laughs) So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, isn't it always important to remember that the word's got to go forth. You got to speak it. You got to say it. You can know it. But it's not enough to have it just internalized. That's why it's a good thing. That's why coming to church matters. You hear the word of the Lord, give God praise for that word. Lay hold of that and say, that's my promise. Hallelujah. And when I beheld, uh, here, let me me, me keep going. And there was a noise and behold, a shaking. There were bones climbing out from under other bones. If the bones could have talked to each other, they would say, get out of my way. I got a hip bone out there somewhere. I got to find it. I'm on my way. Hallelujah. Man, I feel something going on on me. Hallelujah. There's some sinew coming on me. Breath is about to come in me. And I, when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them. And this, God can do more than, maybe I'm just talking to myself, but I think I'm talking to somebody else. Something's about, ooh, I feel a little Holy Ghost right now. Something's about to happen. Somebody is about to see a miracle that's beyond definition. God's going to take a valley. Turn it into an army. God's going to take chaos and pull it all back together. Man, I wish somebody would help me right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, whatever that valley is, Whatever that circumstance is. Stand with me, please. I don't know what time it is. Then said he unto me, prophesy under the wind. And when I beheld, lo, they, the sinews and the flesh, but there was no breath in them. Can I tell you this? Sometimes it's going to get a little tedious when you're, when God's at work. I don't know what you would have felt like, but if I would have been Ezekiel, I just got to be honest enough to say, I started trying to preach to these, this clutter, prophesy to them, you fixing to have a miracle happen to you, you, man, you need a miracle. Hallelujah. <laughs> I take a look at you. You don't look so good right now, but you're going to look better. Things are going to look up. You're fixing to get a dose of something you didn't feel like you, you didn't, maybe didn't know it was coming today, but it's coming your way. Man, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place right now, Brother Johnson. Hallelujah. Somebody, somebody. (laughs) Woo, you're fixing to live. And all of a sudden, Ezekiel is standing in the middle of an army. They're all, their bones are connected. They're covered with sinew. They're covered with flesh. And every single one of them is dead. That would be a nice thing to do. Thank you, Lord. You put me in the middle of a bunch of dead folks. Now, 
You just pulled them all together and you brought them back around. So here's the next thing, Lord. I'm believing you're going to help us a little bit right now. I don't know what all he, maybe he didn't talk to him. I think by then he probably was caught up enough in the spirit and he just simply said, and when I beheld, lo, the sinews and flesh came upon them and the skin covered them above and there was no breath in them and then said he unto me, prophesy under the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds. Oh, I wish somebody would just get an unction from on high right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Could we just take a minute and walk down here to the front of the building? I'm not going to ask you to prophesy to the wind, but if you can come down here tonight and just stand. I feel a little something in my spirit. Here, I'm going to try to close this just a little bit. Thus saith the Lord God, prophesy, for, uh, for I come from the four winds, O breath. And this is what he said, and breathe upon these slain. Devil, you may have won once. Chaos, you may have won once. They're dead, yeah. But you better start doing some shaking yourself. These bones have already come together and if there's anything about to rattle, it's fixing to be hell. Because what's gonna happen around here is there's something gonna come on this army. They were slain, but life is about to come back to them. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came unto them, and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Could somebody believe God with me right now that there is a miracle? Sing it, Sister Mitchell. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Somebody lift a hand and let's expect a miracle right now. Let's expect that God, come on, come on, don't cast your faith aside. Don't turn your faith aside. Oh God, let it get a hold of us. Let us set our affection, even in the middle of this chaos. Lord, yeah, 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 you've been good to us, God. I feel you moving right now. say this one little thing. Don't let your faith take the nearest exit just because everything is not finished in one failed swoop. Sometimes you just got to keep on praying. Keep saying. Keep Just keep on saying. Ezekiel K. stayed with the message. It, it, it all didn't happen at one time. But he kept talking to the bones talked to the sinew he talked to a dead army and then he talked to the wind yeah come from wherever you are from the four corners one more time would you lift a hand and let's sing it together this is the sound of trombones right
you some promises in this house. My sweet Caffrey in Jesus' name, everything in this house that needs God's touch, Lord, ah, hallelujah. Touch our young people across the way. Touch the Spanish church up in the, up in the balcony and in the back, Lord. God, touch our children, Lord, and kids serve tonight. God, give us revival Sunday morning. Give us revival, oh Lord. Every, oh God, touch the camp meeting. Oh God, let this summer be filled with glory. God, help somebody to believe that this valley can live. This whole place can come back alive, whatever it is. Has the Lord been good to anybody tonight? Can you give him praise with me one more time? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time, Sister Mitchell. And second lesson we learn from that place of difficulty that was in 2 Samuel 23 and 10 is that the Bible says that his hand grew weary. You know, there was a thousand or more of them around him that day and David's mighty men, those two powerful men of faith. What I want to say to somebody tonight is don't get weary when there's no one around you to help. Refuse to let yourself to get weary in well-doing. That's what the enemies, Daniel said, would try to do in the end time is to wear out the saints of the Most High. Man, I feel a refreshing in this house tonight. I, 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 I do. I feel like standing up in Jesus' name. I never, man, I just, I want that same kind of faith that got a hold of Ezekiel. Just stand up in the middle of all of that. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. Deuteronomy 33 and 25. Here it was. Eleazar only got weary after he had beaten the Philistines. <laughs> That's when he felt the weariness. Sometimes after your greatest victory is when you're going to feel some weariness try to come on you. But don't let the weariness get the best of you. The mercy of God comes upon us. Oh, Deuteronomy, there was a promise to the children of Israel, and I am, I promise, I'm trying to, to close. And it was this, thy shoes shall be iron and brass, and as thy days, so shall thy strength be. In other words, every day, there's going to be strength enough to get through that day and win. Psalms 138 and 3, and I quit. In the day when I cried, thou answerest me and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. Isaiah 40 and 29, he giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Come on, Elijah. Come on, Elijah. Go ahead and talk to them. Set your affection. You're right in the middle of it. Go ahead, go ahead. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a little while. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle him. Glory. I wish I had another hour because here's the thing. Jacob wrestled 
But he didn't feel the sinew shrinking until the victory had already graced him. It was after he won the battle. My point is this. Faith to faith. Because in life, you're going to fight one battle and turn around and you got another one coming your way. But the thing is, be not weary in well-doing. For in due season ye shall reap. If you faint not, you're dismissed. God bless you. I love you. I've been way too long.